fascinating guy. I mean, he's kind of a quiet ego, um, large ego. That was his whole role during World War II, dealing with Montgomery, Churchill, oh my God, Patton. And he's, but he's also, he's a kind of a quiet strength, too. Even capturing his voice is very difficult, I think, because it's somewhat high-pitched, but at the same time, it has, it has resonance. So, it's an interesting character for me. It's not necessarily somebody who thinks that I'd right off the bat be playing. A lot of people say, you can play Truman. Sure. But it's like, I guess it was a, it's a, it's a tough job. Two other ones. It isn't a specific stomach ailment. It doesn't have a name or anything. I mean, it'd be going up for so many years that I was, you know, suicidal. I mean, I just didn't want to live. So I just thought, if I'm going to die, if I'm going to kill myself, I should take some drugs, you know. <laughs> may as well become a junkie because I felt like a junkie every day. Um, nature, I think, birds, bees, spring, fall, all those subjects which are absolute gifts to the um, person who doesn't have, you know, sort of any interior experiences to write about. I think that the coming of spring, the stars of the head, first snowfall and so on are gifts for a child, you know, a young poet. was uh, brought up on, on the um, northern coast of, of Massachusetts and my whole childhood was spent on the ocean. I remember the, the very spectacular hurricanes we used to have where my grandmother's cellar would be flooded and there would be sharks washed up in the garden and so forth. And the image of the sea has been with me ever since, even though I've, I've um, been inland for a few years. Thank you. 